There are so many animals out there that we haven't even discovered all of them yet. And the most dangerous don't have to necessarily come in the shape of a powerful, meat-eating predator with strong muscles and razor-sharp teeth. Sometimes, the small and unassuming ones are the ones you need to look out for the most. From a dog breed that is surprisingly dangerous to a very strange-looking little animal with a very mythical name, here are 20 animals that will give you nightmares. Number 20. Goliath Grouper Fish the Atlantic or Itajira Goliath grouper is a large saltwater fish of the grouper family found primarily in shallow tropical waters among coral and artificial reefs at depths of 16 to 164 feet. On the western side, its range includes the Florida Keys in the United States, the Bahamas, most of the Caribbean, and most of the Brazilian coast. On some occasions, it's caught off the coast of the U.S. states of Maine and Massachusetts. In the eastern Atlantic Ocean, it occurs from the Congo to Senegal. This animal will give you nightmares. They can reach extremely large sizes, reaching lengths of up to 8.2 feet and can weigh up to 790 pounds. The world record for a specimen caught on hook and line is 680 pounds, caught off Fernanda Beach, Florida in 1961. They typically weigh about 400 pounds when they become adults. Despite its nightmarish appearance and its less than pleasant disposition, the Goliath grouper is considered to be of excellent food quality. The Atlantic Goliath grouper was a highly sought after quarry by fishermen. It's a relatively easy prey for spear fishermen due to the grouper's inquisitive and generally fearless nature. They also tend to spawn in large aggregations, returning annually to the same locations. This makes them particularly vulnerable to mass scavenging during breeding. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Sawfish. Sawfish are more closely related to rays than sharks. Its appearance is that of a fish with a long, toothy snout. They have a cartilaginous skeleton. Sawfish dimensions range from 1.5 meters to 6 meters. The most outstanding feature of the sawfish is, of course, its saw-shaped snout, which is covered with pores sensitive to movement and electricity, which allows them to detect the movement and even the heartbeat of prey buried in the marine sediment. Its snout then acts as a detector while the sawfish swims over the sea floor searching for food. Its snout also serves as a digging tool for digging up crustaceans. When prey swims by, the sawfish attacks from below and furiously uses its saw. This usually injures the prey enough for the fish to gobble it up without much difficulty. Sawfish also use their snout as a defense against other predators such as sharks, dolphins, and intruding divers. The teeth that protrude from the snout are not true teeth, but modified dental scales. The body and head of sawfish are flattened as they spend most of their time lying on the ocean floor. Like the rays, its mouth is located in its lower part. In its mouth, there are small teeth to eat small crustaceans and other fish, although sometimes it devours them whole. Number 18. Pangolin Pangolins, sometimes also known as anteaters, are mammals of the order Folidota. They have large scales which cover most of their body. They are found in tropical areas of Asia and Africa. The size of pangolins varies depending on the species, from 30 centimeters to 1 meter. Females are generally smaller. The external appearance of pangolins is characterized by the long, hardened, plate-like scales that cover their body, which is an unusual attribute among mammals. Despite not being their primary weapon, the pangolin's powerful legs Legs, used for digging through hardened earth are strong enough to snap a human leg in one blow. Pangolins can also emit a foul-smelling acid from glands near the anus, similar to that secreted by a skunk. Pangolins have short legs with sharp claws that they use to burrow. 
They lack teeth and the ability to chew. Instead, they open anthills and termite mounds with their powerful front claws and insert their long tongue. The populations of these mammals have been reduced since their meat is highly demanded in Africa and Asia. In China, their meat is considered a delicacy. In addition, various Asian regions attribute medicinal powers to its scales without scientific evidence. In recent years, pangolins have been the victims of illegal animal trafficking. Number 17. I, I. This funny-looking little creature is a long-fingered lemur, a strepsurin primate native to Madagascar with rodent-like teeth that perpetually grow and a special thin middle finger. Its bizarre appearance seems to be the main reason for its name lemur, which means night spirit in Latin. Their fur is long all over the body, especially the tail, which is why the I.I. was initially classified as a rare squirrel when it was discovered. The color of the fur is completely black except on the face, where it lightens to a whitish color. Adults reach the approximate size of a domestic cat. It weighs 2 to 3 kilos and can live up to 23 years. In addition to its large ears, its eyes also stand out on its head, large and yellow, typical of the nocturnal animal that it is. Malagasy folklore considers the eye eye a magical creature. It has a very inexpressive face, and the fact that it's nocturnal and fast has caused superstition to skyrocket in Madagascar. In some areas, for example in Ambanja, when an eye eye is seen, it must be killed and its tail or the whole animal hanged on a post at a crossroads. Local beliefs affirm that in this way, any death in the area will be avoided and that people from outside the region who pass through the place will take the bad luck with them. For them, the animal itself personifies bad luck. Number 16. The Brazilian Tree Hopper also known as Bocidium globulare, this strange little bug looks like a sketch of a Da Vinci ancient flying apparatus or a doodle a kid would make, but certainly not a real animal, right? You must be asking yourself, what on earth are those little black orbs on the top of its head? Are they eyes? Antenna? A very funky hairdo? Well, the purpose of the bizarre helicopter-like orbs, which are called pronotum, is still today something of a mystery. Researchers believed at one point that they may function like a peacock's tail used by males to show off their genetic superiority and vigor to potential mates. But that theory is highly unlikely, as both female and male Brazilian tree hoppers have the balls, so to speak. Another theory is that they evolved to look like they have a second fake head to mislead their predators. But more recent studies suggest that the bizarre structures over their heads are there to mimic the handiwork of a very dangerous parasitic fungus called Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, which ruthlessly invades the bodies of ants and turns them into submissive zombies. Literally. Predators know not to mess around with an infested ant. They know it's extremely dangerous for themselves, so they leave the little tree hopper alone. It's a very efficient protective method that doesn't really hurt anybody in the process. Number 15. Snub-Nosed Monkeys the Burmese noseless monkey, or snub-nosed monkey, is a species of primate native to northern Burma and adjacent China. The species was named by Geisman and colleagues in 2010 from a skull and is named in honor of philanthropist John Stryker. The known population is estimated to be 260 to 330 individuals. The species is known in local dialects as Nuo Mei, which translates to upturned face monkey. Locals also say it's very easy to find snub-nosed monkeys in the rain because the rain supposedly causes causes them to sneeze due to the short fur around their upturned nose. For this reason, they sit with their heads down, hiding their faces between their knees when it rains, probably to protect their noses from water getting in and irritating their airways. Although this species is new to science, it's not new to local hunters. This monkey is threatened by the loss of its natural habitat and by hunting. The monkey's fur is mostly black. Its crown consists of a thin, tall, forward-curving crest of long black hairs. He has white, protruding ears, a nearly bare face with pale pink skin, a mustache of whitish hairs above his upper lip, and a distinctive white beard. The perennial area is white and clearly defined, and the extremities are mostly black. The inner sides of the upper arm arms and legs are blackish brown. Number 14. The Purple Frog a new species of frog, a violet-colored batrachian that has very ancient genetic roots, has been discovered in southwestern India by a team of biologists who decided to classify it in a new family. 
At 7 centimeters long, the new frog was named Nasica Batrachis cyadrensis. According to the data provided by its anatomy and the analysis of its DNA, the purple frog comes from a very old branch in the family tree of frogs, according to the scientists who discovered it. This is one of the very few last living representatives of the frog species that lived at the time of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Nasica Batrachis cyadrensis is a close relative of another species of frog, Zuglosicidae, which still lives on the Seychelles Islands, more than 3,000 kilometers from India. The ancestors of these two frogs lived on the ancient continent of Gondwana, which began to break up into several blocks 160 million years ago to form South America, Africa, and another eastern continent that later disintegrated. According to this geological theory, India served as a biotic vehicle for groups of plants and animals that evolved in isolation over tens of millions of years. Number 13. Goblin Shark the goblin shark is one of the most unusual predatory fish in the sea in terms of its morphology. It has a noticeable snout-like extension that protrudes from its mouth. Basically, its jaws can move freely, that is, they move forward when it opens its mouth, and a very strange color, pinkish or reddish with a gray back. The goblin shark is the only living member of the family Mitsucarinidae, of which Scopanorhynchus and Anomatodon are its extinct relatives. It measures between 3 meters with a maximum of 6 meters in length length and can weigh up to 700 kilos. The snout is sheet-shaped, very elongated and flattened, its eyes are small, and it has numerous long and pointed front teeth. The jaw is long, narrow, and may project conspicuously outward, but is usually in perfect alignment with the profile of its head. The goblin shark is a species limited to deep waters, around 1,400 meters, and is still little known today. It feeds on fish, crustaceans, and cephalopods, in whose search its long snout, equipped with sensitive Electroreceptors is undoubtedly very useful. The first known specimen was caught by a fisherman in the Kuroshio Current off the coast of Japan in 1898. Said fisherman named this fish Ichigo, which is Japanese for he who protects or horned shark. The creature was one and a half meters in length. Number 12. Venezuelan Poodle Moth no, this isn't an Ewok with wings, and neither is it a fuzzy little white rabbit. This adorable little creature is a recently discovered type of bug. Meet the Venezuelan Poodle Moth. Now, with a name like that, you just know that this little critter is going to be a fascinating one. Unfortunately, because it's only been discovered very recently, we still don't know much about its behavior or qualities in general. The Poodle Moth was discovered in Venezuela in 2009 by the biologist Arthur Anker during his visit to the Gran Sabana National Park. There's still no complete taxonomic or ecological data, and it's not yet known if it's an independent species or if it is some subspecies of an existing one. For now, it's only called poodle moth for its appearance. A certain resemblance to the muslin moth is noted, which is a moth of the order of Lepidoptera belonging to the family of Arctids. The thing is, the poodle moth was found in Venezuela, and the muslin moth is exclusive to Europe. Dr. Klaus Schuker thinks this moth may be a new species, although a lot of people are being quite skeptical about the whole thing, even going so far as to say that the pictures are fake and that the entire thing is a hoax. Number 11. Blue Dragon as gorgeous as this little creature may look, you should never, ever attempt to touch it. If you do, get ready to live through one of the most painful experiences of your whole life. Despite their very cool name, this animal is, in fact, a species of brightly colored sea slug or nudie branch. It can be found throughout the world's seas in temperate and tropical waters. Some regions where this slug is found include the eastern and southern coasts of South Africa, European waters, the eastern coast of Australia, and Mozambique. This species floats upside down on the surface tension of the ocean. Although they live in the open sea, they can be accidentally washed ashore, which means they can sometimes be seen on the beaches. The blue dragon isn't venomous itself, but it is capable of swallowing the poisonous tentacles of siphonophores, such as the Portuguese man of wars, and storing them in the extremities of its serrata. Touching it can result in a painful sting, with symptoms similar to those caused by the Portuguese man of war. Symptoms that may appear after a bite are nausea, pain, vomiting, acute allergic contact dermatitis, erythema, urticarial papules, potential vesicle formation, and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Number 10. Giant Isopod 
times. This alien-looking creature is a surprisingly large invertebrate, and they are thought to be abundant in the deep, cold waters of the Atlantic Ocean. Considered one of the oldest species in the ocean, the Bathynomus giganticus is a deep-sea scavenging isopod similar to a large mealybug. The species, which can reach a length of 50 centimeters, exhibits a segmented chitinous exoskeleton on the head, thorax, and abdomen. It has paired appendages and antenna and compound eyes like those of terrestrial insects. This deep-sea forager has no known predators and lives in barren, pelagic environments previously considered uninhabitable. In other words, the giant ice Isopod is a badass and can easily survive in very extreme conditions. French zoologist Alphonse Milne Edwards was the first to describe the genus in 1879 after capturing a juvenile male Bathynomus giganticus in the Gulf of Mexico. This discovery was of crucial importance because, at the time of its occurrence, the idea that life existed in the deep ocean had only been recently stated by Charles Wyville Thompson and others. But most scientists at the time refused categorically the idea of life in the deep waters. Giant isopods are not only the largest known member of the isopod family, but also the largest crustacean known to man. They're very closely related to crabs and shrimps. Their impressive size is a result of a phenomenon known as abyss gigantism, which is the tendency of deep-sea animals to grow to a much larger size than similar species in shallower waters. Number 9. Cereal Leaf Beetle this nightmarish critter is an insect with a worldwide distribution and one of the most destructive pests of cereal grains. It produces losses in stored grains with significant decreases in yields. The females lay a large number of eggs, and the larvae feed inside the grains. It was known to cause a syndrome called hypersensitivity pneumonitis, also known as the millman's disease. Adults measure 3 to 5 millimeters in length. They have elongated snouts and a chewing mouth. Its size is variable depending on the nuclei of the grains. In small grains, like millet, they are small. In corn, they are larger. Adults do not have the ability to fly, and the larvae are legless, hunched, and white with a tan head. Females lay 300 to 400 eggs. Males are able to detect if a grain already has an egg from another female, avoiding laying an egg on that grain. The females, to carry out the ova position, drill a hole, lay an egg, and seal the hole with a gelatinous secretion. Perhaps this secretion is the reason other females know that it already contains an egg. This ensures that the larva survives. It's estimated that a pair of cereal leaf beetles can generate 6,000 offspring per year. Number 8. The Blobfish Meet the unfortunate fish that has been dubbed the world's ugliest animal. Now, all living things are beautiful in their own way, of course, but let's hope that this little creature has a great personality. Jokes aside, the Cycroludes marcatus is a species of fish of the Cycroludidae family. Due to the inaccessibility of its habitat, it has rarely been photographed in the wild. It is found exclusively in the depths between the coasts of Australia and Tasmania, in a depth range between 600 and 1,200 meters, although locations between 400 and 1,700 meters have also been reported. It is endemic to Australia, from Broken Bay in New South Wales to South Australia and Tasmania. The blobfish lacks a skeleton and muscles, and unlike most fish, it also doesn't have a swim bladder, the organ that allows it to float and swim, as in its habitat, it would collapse under extreme pressure, causing it to burst. Instead, it's made up of a gelatinous flesh that's less dense than water, so the fish naturally roams above the ocean floor. In fact, this is the way the blobfish doesn't need to expend all its energy in order to swim, meaning that it is able to dedicate part of it to the search for food, which is not abundant on the sea floor. The blobfish is not small either, it can reach 30 centimeters in length. The lack of muscle is not an impediment to feeding, since it mainly ingests any edible matter that floats in its path, preferably deep sea crustaceans. Due to the striking appearance that the blobfish presents outside of the water when the tissues of its head form a humanoid face with a large nose and a sad expression, this species has become a recurring phenomenon on the internet, hence the unfortunate nickname it has sadly earned. Number 7. Star-Nosed Mole Meet the world's fastest eater. This is going to be a video about the bizarre life of the star-nosed mole. 
To give you some perspective on this strange little creature, a group of scientists decided to study the species for 30 years, and all the research revealed was just how strange this underground animal with the odd nose really is. For starters, you can't deny that the star-nosed mole just looks weird. If you were to come face to face with one, you'd probably think there was something terribly wrong with its mouth. But in fact, the octopus-looking mouth is a very advanced organ that's honestly incredibly fascinating. For starters, considering that the species is nearly blind, this tiny critter is astonishingly speedy. This animal is one of the fastest in the world when it comes to ingesting its prey, with a delay of only 120 milliseconds between each swallowed live prey. Its brain decides in just 8 milliseconds whether the prey is edible or not. This time touches the maximum speed of neuronal transmission of the nerve impulse. The rosette of nasal tentacles is therefore a sensory organ that supplies the other senses in the subterranean and aquatic habitat of the animal. Like the fingers of the hand, its precision and sensitivity are maximum. It can touch 10 or 12 different places in a single second. Number 6. The Red-Lipped Batfish no, don't worry, this is not one of those horrific videos where they put makeup on animals. This fish has naturally bright red lips. In fact, this fish has gone through so many adaptations over time that it's ended up looking and acting very unfish-like, so to speak. Basically, if Darwin was still alive, he would be very proud of this species. Red-lipped batfish are not your typical saltwater fish. In fact, they are far from it. From appearance to physical ability, they are far from ordinary. Batfish are not good swimmers. They are bottom dwellers that walk on the ocean floor rather than swim. They have altered pectoral fins that allow them to walk. At the top of the batfish's head, there's a special part of the body that extends outward called the elysium. After the red-lipped batfish fully matures, its dorsal fin develops into a single, column-shaped projection coming off the top of its head. Batfish use their elysium as a way to lure prey close to them. At the top of the elysium, there's a scale which emits a bright light, and since these fish dwell in deep water, the light attracts other fish to where the batfish is placed and allows it to eat those small creatures that fall into its trap. Although they look very strange, they are harmless to humans. Number 5. Gharial this species is sadly on the brink of extinction. The gharial is an unmistakable crocodile that has a long, thin jaw which it uses to catch fish. The male specimens have a large, bulbous growth on the tip of their nose called gara, hence their name. The gharial inhabits the swampy areas of northern India. In addition to its snout, its curious, googly eyes attract attention. However, the body is that of a crocodile, although the legs are smaller than normal. This species can reach 6 meters in length. It spends much more time in the water than most of its relatives. This animal is in critical danger of extinction. It's estimated that there are a little less than 200 specimens in the whole world. The species is dying due to overfishing of small fish by the locals. As this animal only feeds on these small fish, it's gradually becoming extinct due to lack of food. Gharials have a well-developed, laterally flattened tail and webbed hind feet to provide spectacular maneuverability in deep water. On land, however, the adult gharial can only propel itself and glide on its belly. In addition to its swimming abilities, the gharial's body is relatively cylindrical compared to the wider Nile crocodile, and is specialized for capturing various prey from the banks of waterways. Number 4. Dumbo Octopus Grimpotuthis is a genus of cephalopod mollusks in the order octopods, sometimes called Dumbo octopuses because of their ear-like fins that project over their heads, or more accurately, their bodies, and that resemble the flying ears of Walt Disney's iconic elephant character. They are benthic creatures which live in extreme marine depths. In this genus, the Dumbo octopus is the rarest species of octopus. The largest specimens reach 20 centimeters, although one was found to be 1.8 meter long and weigh approximately 13 kilos. Little is known about their habits, though. Most of the specimens of Grimpotuthis have been found between the depths of 1600 and 2200 meters. Modern bathyscapes have found species of these octopuses at 5000 meters below the surface. The Dumbo octopus has eight tentacles with 60 to 70 suckers on each one. Their distribution pattern distinguishes whether they are male or female. Its body is gelatinous and soft to survive the pressure of the depths, and it has fins similar to ears on the upper part of the body. 
Dumbo octopuses live in all oceans, and the different species have adapted to different marine habitats, but especially in colder waters. Number 3. Yeti Crab The Kiwa Hirsuta is a decapod crustacean that was discovered in 2006 in the South Pacific. It was the first discovered member of a new family called the Kiwadi. Kiwa Hirsuta's name is in honor of the goddess Kiwa in Polynesian mythology. The crab is large, measuring 15 centimeters with the claws extended, and has received the common name of Yeti crab due to its white color and abundant silks. These silks are covered with colonies of bacteria whose function is being studied at the moment. The researchers speculate that perhaps the crab cultivates and eats these bacteria. How awesome is that? The closest known relative of the Kiwadi family is the hermit crab. The specimen of Kiwa Hirsuta was found during an oceanographic expedition organized by the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute in the Pacific Antarctic Ridge, south of Easter Island, at a depth of 2,228 meters. Since the 19th century, no new family had been described in this group of animals. In 2006, a second species of the genus, Kiwa Puravita, was discovered and described in 2011. The Kiwa Hirsuta species is found in the basaltic zones that surround the hydrothermal vents in the area. It is omnivorous, it does not have eyes, and genetic studies related to the Galatheids and related groups, although morphologically it resembles the aglids, whose current representatives are only found in rivers and lakes in South America and in La Paz. Number 2. Dragonfish also known as sea moth, the dragonfish is mainly found in Indo-Pacific waters. The dragonfish are a member of the Pegasidae, a family of marine fish of the order Gastrosteiforms. They have a wide and very depressed body, same, contained within bony plates, with a small and toothless mouth, as well as a characteristic long and flat face protruding from the nostrils. Dragonfish possess dorsal and anal fins, which are quite short, without spines, and usually with five soft rays each, as well as relatively large or horizontal pectoral fins with more than 10 rays. Unlike most fish in the sea, the dragonfish does not have a swim bladder. They aren't very large either, measuring about 13 centimeters maximum in length. Little is known about the natural history of this species. They feed on tiny plankton with the help of their extremely protruding snout. Spawning takes place in open water near the surface. Number 1. Tibetan Mastiff the first thing to keep in mind is that most Tibetan Mastiff dogs become dangerous or aggressive without proper socialization. They are territorial and generally stubborn, but by allowing them to meet people and other pets regularly throughout their lives, you will reduce the threat of them becoming a danger to people or other animals around them. Tibetan Mastiffs are an intelligent breed with a strong sense of self-awareness. They are very powerful, protective animals, which makes them dangerous to people or animals they consider to be intruders or a threat. If they have no reason to feel that their family or the livestock on the farm are threatened, they are not a danger at all. A Tibetan Mastiff is generally calm until provoked. As already mentioned, they are unlikely to show aggression if they are not facing a threat or trying to protect a family member. They are very loyal dogs, so you can expect a level of protection bordering on possessiveness, especially when you take into account the fact that they are extremely territorial. Thus, they will show aggression if a stranger surprises them or if wolves, foxes, or other dogs come charging into their yard. I don't know about you, but I didn't even know half of these animals actually existed. Which one of the creatures in this video scares you the most? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.